had a couple of requests for a walk around video of my budget SV650 track bike build here. This is a 2003. I'll take a little walk around and we'll see what's different. So the uh, first thing you'll notice is obviously the bodywork is completely different. This is from a 2017 and up GSXR 1000RR. Uh, if you're interested in doing this kind of modification, I have another video for that, so, so go back and check that out. Um, there's some details on what you need to do there. There is a bit of fabrication. Uh, it's not plug and play, certainly, but uh, I think well worth the time. Anyhow, let's get into the uh, mechanicals of all of it. So the front end is from a 2005 GSX-R600. I purchased this off of eBay from a bike that was being parted out. Um, the reason for it really was because I crashed pretty significantly turn one at Thunder Hill and the uh, forks had a good you know, 30 degree angle in them by the time the uh, bike stopped moving. So uh, it was somewhat out of necessity, but you never pass up a good opportunity for an upgrade, right? Uh, so the, the great thing about these, there's a few <laughs> great things about moving up to them. Uh, for one, you get your compression rebound. Damping is adjustable in addition to the preload, of course. Uh, the stock bike only has a preload uh, adjustment on it, I believe. Well, it's been so long um, that I've had this. I don't even remember if it even has that. Uh, but anyhow, uh, I think one of, the, one of the really better features of having the Gixxer is the, the big brakes and these four piston calipers. Uh, they are phenomenal at stopping. Uh, it makes it makes the SV brakes seem like they are made out of wood as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they're great. They will have no problem uh, stopping you from a high rate of speed, uh, picking up the rear tire a little bit, at least unweighting it significantly is no problem here. Uh, a lot of confidence from that. So uh, you'll need the, the front fender as well. Uh, if you're gonna do that, don't forget about that. Um, I don't know if the braided lines um, reduce any swelling, give you good feedback on the, the brake lever. Mm. As you can tell, I use all the, the stock gauges and whatnot. Uh, I do use a steering stabilizer. I highly recommend one of these. Um, even if you're just starting off, I think I was maybe on my second track day when I realized that I needed one uh, again at Thunder Hill. Uh, once you crest the hill and you're on the gas and you unweight the front end and the uh, bars start wiggling side to side, you'll, uh, you'll, you're going to want, you're going to want one too. Um, uh, back, oh, before I leave this area, uh, you'll note there's no key. Uh, Woodcraft makes an awesome plug-and-play bypass if you're looking to get rid of that. These things are surprisingly heavy, believe it or not. Uh, but also, it's a Trek bike, so we're going to need that for. Um, yeah, it's just a plug-and-play uh, into the uh, wiring underneath the tank here in front. So super easy. Uh, it'll allow you to... Uh, Get rid of the, the ignition switch they also have products to get rid of the uh, left controls uh, nothing here is needed turn signals lights etc um, i do maintain the stock kill switch uh, that works just fine um, obviously the only thing here that's really unnecessary is the, the four ways uh, which aren't attached anyhow uh, and then the second thing you'll need if you're going to go keyless is to get a cap um, that doesn't have a key. This also saves a little bit of weight. Um, this was from Vortex. I use a lot of their products and like them. Um, the, the good thing about them, their they're quality and affordability, uh, that's a great intersection. You can get a lot of really expensive parts that functionally don't do any better job than, than what these do. Um, yes, this is a 2003. If you're noticing the black frame that didn't appear till 2005, I actually painted that. Um, I painted all this stuff at home. 
uh, a more or less a, a matte white and a uh, matte black. Uh, let's see, moving down, uh, some case covers. Uh, not as critical uh, on a V-twin, I suppose, as it would be on an inline four, but uh, why take the chance? If you're gonna lay it down, uh, maybe you can recover if you've got enough uh, components that you can replace and uh, replacing engine covers is no fun at all. So just a little protective plate for that helps quite a bit. Uh, the rear sets, super necessary. Uh, the, even on the S, the model SV, the, uh, the, the pegs are way down here and you're gonna be scraping those uh, in no time at all if you haven't already. So uh, again, Vortex. Uh, again, paid to say this, but <laughs> I like them a lot. These these are really nice. You've got a lot of adjustment possibilities here, um, not only for the the holes, uh, the multiple holes that are here, but you can also um, use this bracket on the left uh, or the right, so you can swap them if you actually want it to be lower than this. Um, I'm actually gonna I'm actually in the process of lowering these a little bit and putting them back. Um, so that's why they're different on the other side. Get to this side next. Um, to complement the front suspension upgrade, I went ahead and made an upgrade to the rear suspension. So this is from a 2004 GSX-R 1000. Um, I know a lot of people use a ZX-10 uh, rear shocks now. Uh, if they're not, you know, fully upgrading to Olin's uh, or whatnot, Penske, I see a lot of those out there. Uh, that's great, but for the pace that I'm at, uh, these stock replacements work great. And again, compression and damping. Uh, you got the external reservoir here. Um, and you can see some of the adjustment that's in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's great for really fine-tuning things. And, and the reason... For nothing else, if the reason for wanting to do that is to prolong the life of your tires, uh, you can really uh, chew up a set of tires in no time with the wrong suspension settings. So um, getting that dialed in um, for your pace and the track itself, uh, well worth it. Uh, highly recommend visiting the suspension guy, whether it's you know 40 or 80 bucks, depending on who it is. Uh, you get a full day worth of uh, tuning. Um, and they'll dial it in, and conditions change throughout the day anyway, so that'll help you fine-tune everything. Um, all right, so the rear chain, <laughs> the rear chain, the chain is, uh, is a 520. The stock one's a 525, and uh, basically the numbers refer to the first digit is the link distance between the, the links, and the second number is the width there. So uh, these are a little bit narrower and therefore reduces the rotating mass, uh, freeing up a little bit of horsepower. Um, obviously the, the sprockets have to change as well, both front and rear. Um, so this is a, a 520 rear and uh, this is also a 45 tooth, as you can see there, uh, by Driven. Uh, this is a little bit shorter gearing than what came on the SV650S. I believe the same gearing that came on the naked bike. Um, anyhow, it gives you a little bit, uh, a little more, more torque uh, coming through the gears. Uh, coming out of the corners is helpful. Um, I've really liked that. I've never topped out uh, on a 44 anyway. So uh, that was a nice upgrade. Um, and as you pull back here, you can tell that this rear tire is uh, significantly wider than the stock one. This is a wheel off a 2008 uh, GSXR 600. This wheel is an inch wider, which will allow you more tire options. Uh, particularly, I wanted to go with the uh, uh, Dunlop Q4, which is a great track day tire. I, I've really enjoyed having this on the bike. Um, the 180, uh, you know, may not give you much in the way of performance itself, but the, the wheel itself is three pounds lighter than the narrower SV wheel, 
you're going to offset some of that with the weight of the tire plus uh, the rotational mass is further from center. So, um, you know, maybe a wash as far as performance goes, but you do get to open up to uh, a wider variety of tires now. Um, although I guess Bridgestone makes some 160s that are highly recommended as well. Uh, you can't just slap this wheel on and expect everything to fit. Um, contact uh, Twinworks Factory. Um, you may have heard of them, TWF. Uh, what you'll do is you'll send them the sprocket carrier here, and you'll also send them the brake caliper uh, bracket. And what they'll do is they'll machine those, uh, take a bit off, and they'll also provide you with the correct spacers. And um, I think it was maybe 150 bucks or something like that. Uh, ship it back to you and you're good to go. Uh, just mount this, this 180 right on there. Um, obviously the pipe is different. Actually the whole exhaust system is. Um, Congratulations if you've ever seen another FMF exhaust on a street bike. Uh, it's a brief venture on their part, uh, and I got a good deal on it <laughs> since they had a, 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 a partnership of sorts, uh, an industry, industry partnership with my former employer. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, I've had this exhaust forever. Um, I can't tell you how much weight it saved. I, it's probably the only thing I didn't weigh because I did it so long ago. Uh, that in the rear fender. And speaking of weighing things, he, even with the new exhaust and without the, the fender and everything, uh, all the modifications cut off 32 pounds from this bike. Um, so probably you're easily looking at 42 or more uh, altogether from the street version. Uh, this bracket fabricated, um, as you can tell, this subframe is different. Um, this is a 2005, a newer subframe. This is aluminum, whereas the 2003 and I believe the 2004 were both steel. Um, but they do have a little different geometry. The seat sits lower on the 04 and newer. Um, so you can't just replace one, you gotta replace the seat as well as the subframe if you're gonna do that. Um, I saved a lot of weight not just with the aluminum but with you know cutting off all the excess in the back as well um the rear brake reservoir this is more than enough brake fluid just for a rear brake uh, you don't need the whole reservoir um, this freed up a little bit of of uh, space for me because mounting the, the pegs as high as as they are and having the lower subframe uh, I wasn't able to get the uh, stock reservoir um, mounted without making some other modifications. And, you know, why even do that? It's just a tube. <laughs> That's all it takes. Uh, I've, I got this from Spears Racing. Um, yeah, you can see the exhaust. It's all new there. Um, of course, engine cover both sides, uh, replacement cap because this had been damaged from the previous fall um, and this is also kind of the cool thing about this eventually I'll get more safety wire on this bike but uh, it's already pre-drilled for that and then back to the front um, this is a uh, also from Spears this is a, actually a modified R6 throttle uh, the difference in, is the uh, the degree to which you have to rotate to go from a uh, closed throttle to a wide open throttle. Uh, on the stock SV, it's a quarter turn. And on the R6, it's a uh, one-fifth a turn. And that was, I, I would say, one of the most necessary things I've done with this. I was finding that I was constantly having to re-grip the throttle in order to get it wide open or um, re-grip to get it to close. And there were times where you, know, you don't wanna be coasting, so I'd be wide open throttle and then go to grab the brake and actually not have the throttle closed. So 
the you know the rear wants to pass the front and that's not a situation you want to have happen so this completely solved that i don't have to regrip at all um highly recommend this modification it's like 15 bucks it's totally worth it but otherwise um the master cylinder and whatnot are uh, gsxr they work great all right, now there's maybe something you spotted that I didn't cover. Uh, if so, hit me up, ask me a question. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Uh, thanks. Please like and subscribe, as they all say, right?